Pastor Brennan coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast. It's good to be here today. Good to be uh, on. It's good to be live to talk about the Word of God. And I want to. I do want to thank all those who are tuning in and will be tuning in. And I do have to apologize ahead of time. I don't really have a. Uh, I don't really have a usual message to preach. And I wasn't as prepared as I ought to, so I want to apologize for that ahead of time. Uh, just a lot of stuff going on. It's been very busy, and um, just really haven't had the time to actually take some time to, you know, get a message prepared. So I apologize for that. I'll try to do better next time. Uh, but we're going to be talking about, uh, I'm going to be reading some scripture today, so we're going to kind of do things a little bit differently. And if I had to title the message, uh, the, the title would be, uh, Who Will You Choose? And we're going to be talking about and going through, through when Jesus was put on trial. And we're going to be taking a look at a particular prisoner and we're going to take a look at what he represents and I'm also going to kind of get into why this is such a big deal why it was a big deal then and why it's a big deal for for us today <clears throat> amen so if you have your King James Bibles with you turn with me to Matthew chapter 27 Matthew chapter 27 and we're going to start in verse 15 it says now at the feast okay because at this time it was it was a feast day uh, uh, and so it was I believe it was um, uh, not it was um, I can't think of it now it was Passover because Jesus Christ is our Passover um, so it was in it was in those it was in those feast days. Now, at the now at that feast, the governor was wont to release onto the people a prisoner, whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus? which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent, sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you they said Barabbas Pilate said unto them what shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ they all say they all say unto him let him be crucified and the governor said why what evil hath he done but they cried out the more saying let him be crucified when Pilate saw that he could prevail, he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. See ye to it. it. Then answered all the people and said, his blood, be a, his blood be on us and our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. <clears throat> now, the title of this message is, Who Will You Choose? In this passage, we see a couple things. We Actually, we see a lot of things. First thing we see is that Pilate is wanting to release Jesus. But the people and the chief priests said, no, give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas is where? 
He is in jail. He's in prison down below. And they brought him up. Okay? What does that remind you of? Who is in the pit right now and will eventually come up and make himself known? It's the Antichrist. Barabbas represents and is a picture of the Antichrist. And we see that he was brought up out of the out of prison out of the pit and we see that the chief priests and the scribes by the way the chief priests and scribes they are religious leaders they represent though and guess what they represent those who claim to know Christ but yet they are disobedient against his laws like Joel Osteen and all them. Remember what Jesus said. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father. So we see here that people are choosing the Antichrist over Christ. And by the way, <clears throat> we're going to start to see that. We're starting to see that even in our days. Why? Because people right now are being conditioned to accepting a one world order, a new world order, headed up by the Antichrist. See, this is a type and picture of what we're seeing in our days. And we're actually going to actually start seeing it more frequently. Okay? So I'm gonna let's let's go back to the scriptures and let's Let's reread this, and I'm going to explain a little bit as we reread it. Okay, so starting in verse 15, it says, Now at that, that, now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, and they had had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. So let's stop right there. Remember, Barabbas is a type and picture of the Antichrist. By the way, you know why he was in jail, in prison? Because he was a murderer. Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? So we see that Barabbas is a type and picture of of the Antichrist. Okay? Now, therefore when they therefore when they gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called the Christ? Folks, people have a choice. Who will you choose? Will you choose Jesus? Christ to be your Lord and Savior or will you choose the Antichrist which one will you choose as for me and my house we will serve the Lord amen <coughs> now therefore when they were gathered together Pilate said unto them whom will you right, whom will you release that I release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called the Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Let's stop right there. Isn't it interesting? And the reason why I bring up all these so-called Christians that claim to know Jesus but deny him by their works. Here's why, here's why I said that. Because it was it's interesting that when Jesus came riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. What were the people saying? 
Hosanna. Hosanna. Glory to the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. They were welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. You know that even false brethren will do that? They, false brethren, will welcome Jesus. But when it comes to a choice, those false brethren are going to choose a murderer over Jesus Christ. And guess what? It is these false brethren that are going to mislead a whole bunch of people. Like Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and all these other clowns that think that they're born again and they're not. They say they love Jesus, but their hearts are far from Him. They are just as worse as those Pharisees. And I'm going to tell you something. Even born-again, Bible-believing Christians can be susceptible to being Pharisee-like. Even I'm susceptible to being Pharisee-like and legalistic. We as believers need to be careful and we need to make sure that we put ourselves in check. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Because I'm going to tell you something. The time's coming where people who are not born again will have to make a choice. And I'm going to tell you that a majority of the people will choose a murderer over Jesus Christ. In other words, they're going to choose a murderer and whom is the Antichrist over Christ. Why? Because there is so much brainwashing going on and there is so much MK Ultra mind control going on that people are being conditioned to receiving a mark in their right hand or forehead. Can I get an amen from God's people on that? Now, Barabbas, again, is a type and picture of the Antichrist. Okay? The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Right there, they said, We want Barabbas. I think it's really sad when when we when we start to see in our days on how people want to choose a murderer over someone who actually gives life. It's heartbreaking and it's sad. But I'm gonna tell you something. This is a word of warning. Trouble's coming, folks. And by the way. I suspect that not a lot of preachers would ever teach stuff on on the like this. Now, does that mean that I'm better than them? God forbid. But I'm willing to go before God and say, God, send me. I'm not any better than anybody else. As a matter of fact, I'm probably a lot worse than anybody else. Because I have my shortcomings and falls that <coughs> probably, you know, it just never, but that's not the point. But the point is, is that stuff like this needs to, we need more preaching like this. We need people and pastors to step up and say, God send me. And we need people to preach it as it is without the fear of man. Because the fear of man is a killer. You know why? You take a look at Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland. They only preach things that tickle the ears. Why? Because they don't want to lose their money. They're in fear. They're in pride. Amen? Now, we see that they're here that they're wanting Barabbas to come out to release onto them Barabbas. And by the way, it's these 
people. It's the same people that were welcoming Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, and yet you see these people saying, give us Barabbas. You know why? Because those people were not born again people. They were religious Pharisees. They were religious, hypocritical Pharisees that professed, professed the Lord with their mouth, and yet their heart was far from Him. Jesus Christ wants your heart. If you want to change, it begins with the heart. It begins the change of a heart of your heart. And how does and how does that happen? By you putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and inviting him into your heart and asking him to save you. Amen. Now, it says, Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. People who don't know Jesus Christ, who, the, who think they do, are the ones who wanted him dead. Who wanted him dead and to release a, a, release a prisoner named Barabbas. Folks, there are two Jesuses in the Bible. One is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The other one is where Paul says, if anyone come, come to you preaching another Jesus, in which we've not preached. There are two lions in the Bible. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah. And also... You have the lion, that's the roaring lion. Satan makes counterfeits. Jesus Christ of the Bible. Okay? The Son of God. That's who you need to put your faith and trust in. Not the other Jesus. The other Jesus is the Antichrist and will mislead you into hell. And by the way, the Bible says, His Spirit doth now work. You know where, you know where that Spirit works? And the children of disobedience. And these people that said, Crucify Christ, had a spirit of Antichrist. If they didn't, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory and who is Jesus Christ. Amen? Who will you choose today? Jesus Christ or the Antichrist? Now, um, the, and the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. The Pharisees had an antichrist spirit. But I'm going to tell you something. Just because the Pharisees had an antichrist spirit, it doesn't mean they cannot be delivered. You know why? Because Saul, who became Paul, was a Pharisee. He got saved and he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Saul, who became Paul, was a Pharisee who had a spirit of, who had a spirit of antichrist, but then had a spirit of Christ. Because he put it because Paul put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Pharisees can be saved. Even though they blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, they can be saved if they repent. But if they don't repent and they die in their sin, they're going to hell for it. Why? Because they rejected the word of God. That's what Saul was guilty of. Saul had a Saul had a spirit of antichrist because he rejected the word of God and God rejected him of being king. Now, and the governor said, "Okay, so and the governor said, why what evil hath he done?" 
But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. See ye to it. You know what I think? I think Pilate, Pilate knew that Jesus Christ Pilate knew that Jesus Christ was innocent. He didn't want anything to do with him being crucified, which is why he washed, and, washed his hands and said, my hands are clean from it. Why? Because his wife warned him. You know, that's what a good Bible-believing wife should do. Warn her husband of things that are to come. And vice versa. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Now, um, then he answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Then released he Barabbas onto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I'm going to tell you something. The time's coming that people are going to deliberately reject Jesus Christ. And they're going to choose Barabbas. But I'm going to tell you something. When they choose Barabbas, the Antichrist, he's going to seal them. The Antichrist is going to seal those people with a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And people who take that mark are going to hell. Why? Because my Bible said so. My Bible says that you take that mark, you're not going to heaven. The, my Bible says that if you take that mark of the beast, you're, you're going to be burning in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy angels. Amen? So again, I have to ask you, who will you choose today? Jesus Christ or the Antichrist? And by the way, God is so gracious. He's still giving you a choice to this day. But eventually, that there won't be a choice anymore. There won't be a choice anymore. Eventually. Now, um, let's go. I, I want to go one more place. Because I want to do... You know, God speaketh once, yea, twice. We see this in the New Testament. Let's go into the Old Testament. Let's go to, to the book of Daniel. If you got your Bibles with you, turn with me to Daniel chapter uh, just Daniel chapter three. <clears throat> Let's read verse one. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits, and he set it up in the plain of Dura and the providence of Babylon. By the way, this image that Nebuchadnezzar set up is a type or picture of the Antichrist. Okay? It's a type or picture of the Antichrist. And I'll, and I'll explain. The Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together all the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, the treasurers, and the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image. Um, where was I? Okay, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together under the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried to you, It is commanded, O people, nations, and tongues, that at the time that you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. I'll stop right there. Why do you think rock and roll music is the devil's music? 
You know why? Because rock and roll music is about the devil, Satan, the Antichrist, the worship of, of Antichrist, and any abominable thing that God says don't do, that's what those songs promote. Amen? Rock and roll music is music literally from the pit of hell. Now, um, where was I? Okay. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at the, at the, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the Cornet, flute, harp, sack, butt, psaltery, and all kinds of music. All the people and the nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. That means when the music played, they bow down and worship this thing. And, the, and by the way, those who bow down to this image and worshipped it are not God lovers. They're God haters. They're blasphemers. They're worshipping the Antichrist. They chose to worship an image. Amen? Now, let's continue reading. Um, Wherefore, at this time, certain Chaldeans come near and accuse the Jews. They spoke and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, Sultry and dulcimer and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image and whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth it That he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace There are certain Jews whom thou has set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon Shadrach Meshach and Abednego These men O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the only three that said, we're not bound down to that thing. You know why? Because they were God-fearing and Bible-believing. Those three men believed God and they served Him and they loved Him. And even if it meant that they were going to die, they knew, that they knew where they were going. And I'm going to tell you something. It was these three men that chose God... They chose Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, over Barabbas and the Antichrist. Now, the Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fire and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, it is, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. O king, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the image, the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and fury, form of his visage was changed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their garments and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot. 
the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego chose Jesus Christ over Barabbas. You know what happened? They got thrown in to a fiery trial. And you know who delivered? And you know what? Jesus Christ delivered them out of it, didn't he? That's pretty cool, amen? And um, so, I just want to say this. And we're going to sort of wrap things up here. Um, who will you choose today? Will you choose Jesus Christ or will you choose Bar or will you choose Barabbas? Because if you choose Barabbas and don't repent, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to receive a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. And by then it's already too late when you receive that mark. Or are you willing to stand up regardless of what man thinks? Serve the Lord Jesus Christ and risk losing your life. Jesus said, Whosoever shall find his life shall lose it, but those whosoever shall lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. But that means that there has to be a choice. There's a choice to be made here. Believers, I, I want to encourage you. Okay? You, if you're truly born again, God has sealed you with His Spirit. And He sealed you unto the day of redemption. What sin does in a believer's life is to separate yourself. It separates your... It takes away from the fellowship that you have with God. Not your relationship. There's a difference. Fellowship and relationship are two different things. For a believer, if you know that you've sinned, take time to repent and restore that fellowship with God. Now, non-believers, I'm going to be very blunt. I love you guys, and because I love you, I tell you the truth. Okay? Okay? The time's coming where, the, well, first of all, time is running out. Time is running out. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, Jesus Christ wants you to repent of your sin. He wants you to repent of your sins, to ask Him into your heart, to ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. And if you become born again, he will seal you with his spirit. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Amen. Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be like Joel, don't be like Joel Osteen. Don't be like Kenneth Copeland and all them other clowns that think that they're ho that they're holy and, and born again. Those clowns are not born again. They profess him with their mouths, but their hearts are far from them. So non-believer, I just want to tell you, Jesus loved Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to repent of your sin and come to him. He wants to have a relationship with him. Are you willing to give your heart over to Him?
Amen? Listen, I love you guys. And because I love you, I tell you the truth. Don't take what I say for truth. You take what I say and you be, you be Bereans. You take what I say and you match it with the Bible. Let God be true and every man a liar. And by the way, every man a liar, that includes me. That includes me. That includes every Bible preacher out there. That includes everybody out there. Let God be true and every man a liar. I'd rather you not trust what I say. I'd rather you not take my word for things. I'd rather you not follow me. Follow me. I'd rather you not follow me. As a matter of fact, I'd rather you follow with me. Don't follow me. Because I'm just a man. I can mislead people. Follow Jesus Christ. Follow with me with, to Jesus Christ. Do not follow me and don't worship me because I am a human being and I am full of... I, there's no good thing that dwelleth within me. The old man that I have is wicked and it needs to stay dead. That old man within me needs to stay dead. Because I don't like it. This flesh... I hate this flesh. I want to go home. But if I go home, I'm not able to do this. So I'm thankful that I'm here to preach the truth. I'm thankful that I could be here to do these, these videos. Listen, I love you guys. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But this is a serious choice. Who will you choose today? Amen. Listen, this is Pastor Brandon. I'm going to be signing off for the evening. I love you guys. God bless you. You have a fantastic Monday. We'll see you next time. Till then, God bless you. Love you. And remember, think Bible. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. I'll see you next time.